Today, we're learning three new egg cooking techniques, and none of them are for breakfast. Life can be a struggle, but a good meal doesn't have to be. We can make creative, nutritious, and inventive dishes for under $2 a plate. All right, guys, let's talk about eggs. The protein to cost ratio is off the charts. And today I'm gonna to show you some techniques from low fuss to high fuss that are gonna bring eggs into lunch and dinner. It's gonna be delicious. You know, they're not just about breakfast, man. Are you sick of having eggs the same way every single time? Well, let me suggest this to you. Poach your egg. It can jazz up a piece of toast, it can jazz up a salad, it can jazz up a piece of meat or some vegetables. And it's a super duper clean way to cook the egg because it's poaching in water. So you get pure egginess. First thing, we gotta have simmering water. Not boiling water, simmering water, okay? Next thing we gotta do is crack our egg into a vessel. See, this is boiling, this is too much. Simmering is like there. Give your simmering water a nice little twirl. This is gonna help the egg whites wrap around themselves. And now you'll get nice and close to the water and you will drop the eggy waggy in. This is gonna cook for three and a half minutes. It's gonna be perfect. We're gonna toast up our bread because we're making like an avocado poached egg toast here. Now, if you've got butter in the fridge, it's gonna be too hard. It's not spreadable. So that's why I think mayo is a great alternative. Squirt a little packet mayo right on there. Oh, this is like the end of the toothpaste tube right here. It's got a high fat content. There's egg in it, so it, you know, it plays well with its cousin, the poached egg, and it's super duper spreadable. Look at that, gorgeous. Just rest it on some paper towel. Let's do another one. All right, so you get nice spinach and you drop right into the center and watch what happens. See the egg starts spinning, the whites all come around, Oh, perfection. I don't know why I always turn into Mario Brothers, but it happens. Three minutes have elapsed. Get yourself a slotted spoon and land it on some paper towel. This is gonna allow the excess water to be absorbed off. Because of the protein to cost ratio of the poached egg, I'm able to add avocado. Avocado toast in a restaurant is one of the most overpriced things ever. But fear not, my friend, you can have it at home. Besides, what even makes an avocado toast fancy? Is it the way they cut it? I think you could probably mimic that, no problem. It's a beauteous things, my friends. Put a poached egg on top. Grab your other poached egg, be gentle, it will break. This is looking pretty good. Look at how uh, nice and dry the egg is because we let it rest on paper towel. It's all the little things that add up to something greater. We've got some goat cheese here. It's gonna add a little bit of creaminess. This is gonna be extra creamy because avocado's pretty creamy. And here comes some chives. Gives you a little bit of that, the sharp onion flavor. It's good, very important. How about a pop of red? What do you say? Some red pepper flakes. All right, check it out. As we prepare for the yolk drip, I have created a beet. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, tasty. Fellow strugglers, this avocado toast with a poached egg only costs $1.99. Go forth and spice up your midday meals with the most affordable avocado poached egg toast ever. You will not find a cheaper avocado toast anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, even though I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. Remember, this is the cleanest way to cook an egg and it is not as hard as you think. Just think Yakuzi. Yakuzi, spin that water, spin that water, drop it in the center. Three minutes. You want another egg for lunch or dinner? Let me show you another egg for lunch or dinner. It is time for shakshuka, a popular northern African egg dish where it is simmered in tomato sauce. Other people call it eggs in purgatory. Really easy to do, super low maintenance. And it's great for dinner. Let's start with a bell pepper. We're gonna grate up this pepper because it's gonna cook really fast in the pan. I think it's a good idea not to do the onions first so that the amount of crying is less. Box grater is a good investment, you know? You don't have to worry about fancy knife cuts. Let's get some jalapeno. Cut it in half the long way. So here's the thing, how much of a party do you wanna have here, okay? The seeds mean more party. Taking the seeds and the veins out mean less party. So it's really, you know, it's up to you. How much spice can you handle? All right, let's get some onion going. Let's get this sofrito going. All right, a little bit of olive oil. All right, let's get everything in the pan. It's time for some garlic. 
It's time for some cumin. It's good to put these second so that they don't burn at the front. So a lot of times on struggle meals, I'm making stuff in a cast iron pan because it's an affordable, multi-use pan. But in this case, a shakshuka is actually traditionally served in a cast iron pan. I mean, you can bring this to the table and it'll stay warm for a long time because it's such a heavy piece of metal that retains heat. Win-win. Here comes a can of tomatoes, much more affordable than a pre-made sauce. Plus, let me tell you something, you just made a sauce. Why would you buy something that's pre-flavored? Mix it around. All right, let's get some eggs in there, what do you say? We're gonna create four little divots on the quarter hours, you know, 12, three, six, and nine. Egg number one at the 12, two at the three, three at the six, egg number four at the nine. The eggs cook in the tomatoes. It's delicious, and it's really not that hard to do. First of all, look at our eggs, okay? They cooked in tomato. It's like they became best friends. Put some parsley on there. You can chop it up if you want. I think the whole leaves look nice. How about some feta cheese? One of the oldest cheeses on the planet. You can come in and just get that everywhere. This is gonna really balance out the acidity of the tomatoes nicely. It's time to shakshuka. Ugh. Look at that. Get in there with your bread. Be all rustic, you know? Like, boom. Uh. I bet you never thought you could have eggs for dinner. Well, you were wrong, you can have them. They're right here. They're an affordable protein. This is a very, very low maintenance dish. I mean, the eggs are essentially just hanging out. Let's take a bite. You could fork and knife this, but I feel like being a savage. Mmm, this is delicious. Eggs for dinner, who would've known? You know, but eggs don't just play a role in peasant dishes. They're not just the protein that feeds the world, no. Eggs can be a part of some of the highest class dishes ever. And that is what I'm going to show you how to make right now. It is time for our third dish. It is the fussiest of all egg dishes. I am, of course, talking about egg souffle. However, it is not difficult to make. You just need to follow the rules. Here are said rules. Here we go, very first thing we need to do is get our oven safe coffee mugs ready. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in with some butter all the way around. This is going to prevent the souffle from sticking to the mug, but it's also gonna give us something to glue flour onto. So if you've ever made a souffle before, uh, you think that you have to have a large special souffle ramekin, but that is wrong. That is just the work of the souffle lobbying group. You can do it with a coffee mug. Okay. Nice and buttered up. Add flour. The flour is now going to stick to the butter and the flour gives a rough textured surface inside the mug that allows our souffle to climb up something, you know? So go around in a circle, pour the flour into the next one. Coming around and the next mug. We've got our floured mugs. First rule is mug, floured and buttered. Gotta do it. Rule number two, you gotta make a roux. R-O-U-X, roux. Here we go. It is butter and flour in equal parts. Mix it up. That is a roux. It is the classic thickening agent in classic French cuisine. And to it, we're gonna add some milk and that's gonna give us a bechamel, the creamiest of all milk-based creamy sauces. Just kinda get it moving. Roux plus milk equals bechamel. Don't stop stirring! Do not stop! And then before you know it, you've got this thick bechamel. Look, we get some spoon happening. Boom. Let's add a little bit of salt. Let's add a little bit of pepper. Let's add a little bit of nutmeg. All right, eggs are a cheap protein. Remember guys, we're making high maintenance eggs right now. Keep your yolks intact. You gotta get the yolks and the whites separate. These are high maintenance eggs after all. And I have a solution for those of you that don't want to touch raw eggs. It's called the Egg Separator 3000. Basically, you just take a bottle, squeeze it like that, you put it right on top of the yolk, and plop. It is super important that there is no yolk over here, because this is gonna turn into a meringue, and a meringue cannot be meringued if there's any yolk inside of it. Mix up those yolks, and now the bechamel is going to come in little by little, and this is going to become an egg yolk custard. If I pour all the bechamel in the egg yolks, the egg yolks are gonna cook. We're not gonna have a custard. These are high maintenance eggs, so you gotta temper them. You gotta like, you gotta feel out the mood of the egg yolk, if you will. So that means putting a little bit of bechamel, stop! This brings the temp up slowly, and the egg yolks will not curdle. 
It's like a little bit of bechamel, a little bit of stop. We got some lemon zest, zest it up a little bit. And we have some chives. Guys, this is the body of the souffle. Look at that, that's nice, gorgeous. All right, we have our room temperature egg whites right here. Room temperature is gonna help them turn into a meringue much more easily. Normally, you put some cream of tartare in there, and that helps uh, bring the egg whites up and become one more simply. I've found that any acid works. Plus, we've got that lemon from before that we used the zest of. So let's just put a little lemon juice in there. And the rest of this lemon we're gonna save for later because we're not just making a souffle. No, no, no. There is a Robin for this Batman. Ah. Oh, it's cramping so badly. As you can see, the Struggle Whisk 7000 is creating a little bit of a problem in the souffle area. The arm gets really, really tired. Isn't there something else I can use? Frankie, you have a whisk! <laughs> 87 recipes of Struggle Meal. We've had a whisk this whole time. Well, thanks a lot for not telling me. Oh my God, this is so much better. And so these egg whites have air whipped into them at a microscopic level. And that is part of what gives a souffle its lift. There is no shortcut. Nice medium peaks, you see that? It doesn't hold all the way up, but it does keep that shape when I lift. That, Madame et Monsieur, is what we are looking for. We will take our custard and we will take our egg whites and they will become one. You pour the egg whites in. Do not overwork, fold. So that means you come from the bottom and you go on top. You come from the bottom, you go on top. And here come the mugs. Remember, these are gonna rise, so don't pour all the way to the top. Boop, 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 boop. Something like that, making a little bit of a mess. You've got five minutes to get it on the table. Otherwise, they're gonna deflate, and then it's not a souffle anymore. You will not have time once you put it in the oven. Get everything ready to G-O, leave. We're gonna top these off with a little bit of Gruyere cheese. Gruyere is a really fancy cheese. We can afford it because eggs are the main thing in this dish, and they're very economical. And now these go directly into the oven. And once they're in there, you can't open the door. So no peeking. Let's do it. The souffles are so economical to make that we have enough money to make an arugula salad. So let's do it. Here is some arugula. It's a nice bitter green. If you've never tried it, do so. Mmm. A little bit of olive oil around the outside. A little bit of lemon juice. This is the remaining lemon from before. We zested it. It helped us keep our egg whites together. Just a little up, down, down, up. Some salt. And now we've got a delicious arugula salad, and I'm not done yet. What is any salad without bacon? You tell me. So here comes bacon, four strips, three and a half. Put it in. Mix it around. Boom, boom, boom. Like to get some height? I gotta check on those souffles right now. There is not a minute to lose. I can't believe I'm still talking to you. Ha ha! Okay, look at that. I got my side salad with arugula and bacon, and I've got a delicious, simple egg souffle which only cost $1.98. See that custard? See the whites that we didn't overbeat? Are we still filming a TV show here? Because I'm in heaven. That is delicious. The protein to cost ratio of an egg is almost completely unmatched anywhere. And eggs don't just have to be breakfast, no. Today we made lunch and dinner egg dishes and we added even more value to those dishes by adding classic technique. You know, sometimes the order and method that you do things in matters. So we started with low maintenance, we went to medium maintenance and we ended right here with the souffle, which is most certainly a high maintenance dish. No one would ever believe that the cost of this is so low. Go forth, strugglers, make all three, enjoy eggs in your lunches and your dinners, perhaps even for a midnight snack.